Hi, I'm Lou. Another episode of My Car Story. I'm here with Ray Brownfield. Ray, good to see you good as to usual. See you. And if you like Fords and you're a Mustang fan, this is the guy we should be talking to. I'm going to grab the camera right off the bat. So let me go this way. So Ray, what do we have here today? What what is this? This just isn't a '66 Mustang. What what's the what's the deal here? Well, it's a '66 Mustang I had completely restored. I bought it in 1980. I didn't realize it was a rust bucket. I learned the expensive way. Yeah. But now it's better than it came out of Detroit. It's a concourse car. Done a beautiful job nationally, showing all over the United States, and we're just really proud of it. And this is this car just continues to win awards every time you bring it somewhere. It, it really has, uh, not to be braggadoche, but it's really done nicely. Well, let's it let's has. be a little bit. Come on, it's a great car. <laughs> Come on back. Stay right next to me. You, you you've put a lot of time and, and effort into it, and you can see the badges on the car. And this car is exactly the way it came out of the factory in '66. So. Come on with me. So what were some of the difficult parts, I mean, when you were putting this car together? Well, it's a unibody. All Mustangs were, and this was an Illinois-driven car. When the person bought it, they commuted <laughs> back and forth to Caterpillar Tractor Company down in Peoria. And so it rusted. And when they rust, they don't do too well. And this is the kind of body that was in terrible shape. Didn't know that or wouldn't have bought it at the time. So we had to redo the whole underside. All brand new U.S. steel went into this car. And uh, you can't see that from here. That's where all the money was really spent on it. Had it repainted, and uh, the engine was taken out and redetailed, and also we uh, we had to do a little work on the pistons, but uh, we got her got her working good. But this is this is exactly how it came from the factory, and that's why they've given it such great awards. I mean, what drove you to the point of saying, you know what, we're just going to keep going, <laughs> and and we, we're this far through it, we might as well just keep rolling. You know, I'm a competitor, always have been all my life, uh, and I thought, you know, if we're going to do it, let's do it right. And it doesn't cost any more at the time when you're taking it apart just to do it. So I did. Of course, my wife wasn't real happy with that whole idea, but uh, she got over it, thank God. And uh, she's pretty proud of it as well now. And uh, someday the grandsons may have it if they are good boys. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see how good they're going to be. Now, you know, this is international and globally. They'll be watching that, and they'll be using this in the, uh, <laughs> the trial, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah <laughs> so, for sure. Look at just the, and, uh, the caps and everything. It all looks like jewelry. Well, and the car is Arcadian Blue, which is an unusual color. There wasn't that many put out in this color. And this is all matching to what the original yeah. oh, yes. vehicle looked like. Yeah, there's door code that tells you exactly what it needs to be. And so we repainted it to that exact spec. And uh, so we chromed the bumpers here a couple years ago, so they're like brand new. And you were sharing with me, we're just gonna come back over to the side real quick. One of the ways to tell the 65 is the, the little panel here. Yeah, the 66 has a raised louver, so to speak. So that's what makes a 66 distinguishable from the 64 to half and the 66. Right. Please open the door for us. Let's take a look. Where's that panel you were telling us that on, on the car? Is it in the door here? Is it this panel here? No, you were saying that the paint code and things like that. Oh, yeah, the, the paint code. This is this is your, your codes okay. right there. So that tells you exactly. you. We can get a book that tells yeah. us how to interpret those numbers and that okay. sort of thing. So, uh, yep. Exactly how it is. That looks beautiful. It's standard. It's a very standard car. It's enough, no power. It's you got this strip here. That's to protect it from when I go in to not scratch the ah, sill plate. Okay, so that, that's your <laughs> typical blue paint. Uh, got it. No, or when you're painting the blue tape. Yep, that's the. Got it. Keep from scuffing it. So that's when the judges it. see the other part to that, that car. That comes off when the judges get ready to go. Okay. But, uh, yeah, very standard little car. I'm going to actually turn this over so that people can see what that looks like normally. And then we'll go back this way. And the horn, I see you press on that. Yep. Automatic. Yep. 200 cubic inch, 120 horsepower. <laughs> AM radio. Yep. A little interesting statistic. The first day these cars were put on the market in April yeah. of, of uh, 1964 and a half, yeah. 22,000 were sold the very first day. Wow. So That's amazing. Yeah. It, it, in the two and a half years of this kind of model, they sold a million and a half cars. A and a half <laughs> wow. Let's open up under the hood. I wonder how many are still around. A lot. There really are a lot. It, it, you know, 
you see quite a few at the shows. Well, they, is it because of the remanufactured parts back yes. to spec? Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, so they can rebuild them. So There's a lot of stuff you can get. Sometimes it doesn't fit real good, so you gotta Look make at all sure the room in this, and this quality. was six, right? Yep. Wow, there's a lot of room there. It's easy to work on. I really enjoy that. This is the national award winner. This is exactly how all the specs were. Down to the littlest detail. Even this little detail was really hard to find that holds this heater hose up off the manifold. Yeah. And they deteriorate. They're made out of buy tires. They stripped them. Of course, they deteriorate over time. I found out how to make it. I just got a bicycle tire and cut it to the exact dimensions, and that's what it is now. That's it looks original. Yeah. It was kind is, of fun. That is kind of fun. <laughs> what were some other parts when you were looking for this car that you said that was for, hard to find? This piece right here, this clip was extremely. Now there is a manufacturer that makes them, but you, this was really, and they, when they when they serviced them, with the uh, mechanics would take off their oil filter, they just slipped those off, bam, they went on the floor, nobody cared. Yeah. Well, that's an original piece, and so to be concourse to get the points you had to have it and they know to check that oh yes oh geez wow oh, yes that's amazing they're good <laughs> they're good they're good all right that's I'm curious what is um, what's this piece right here that's kind of golden that's an oil sending unit oil sending unit. okay yep. all right mm -hmm. well let's uh let's see that right there let's start her up Alright, it's real quiet. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> keep, keep it keep it up and we'll start it. If it's that quiet, we'll keep it up. Oh, it sounds like a private jet. Oh no, it's a private plane going over us. Alright. Yeah, that's quiet. Yeah. Let's shut her off for a second. Come on out. So, Ray, when you when you take this out, I mean, what's the reaction of people when they see you riding in it? You know, they love the color. They love the authenticity that it does look original, which it is. They love the wire wheel covers. Yeah. They love the fact that it's a convertible. And then they look at the engine and say, wow, that's the cleanest one we've ever seen. So I, I really get a lot of a lot of good thoughts on this car. Bottom line, was it worth it? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ray, always a great treat when we do one of your cars. Thanks so much for letting us do your Mustang. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I appreciate it.